and the uncle there, when I put the kabai on and I came out, he was like, wow, your flashlight's damn big. Whoa. He said that in front of my mom. Hello and welcome to episode one of We Need To Talk. I'm Krish, this is Alicia, that's Ashley and that's Shwen. And on today's episode, we need to talk about... Does Singapore have a pervert problem? Do we? Do we, have a, do we have a pervert problem in Singapore? Yes. Very sure. Very, very sure. Eh? Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, filled yeah. with perverts in our local universities. <laughs> very specific. Right off the bat. Very targeted. Which one, which one, which one, which one? Okay, okay, I'm bringing this up because like a while ago, there was this article about this um, woman. She took, a, she took a hitch on Tele Hitch, or the little telegram group. This guy offered her a free ride. But he was like saying um, there was a certain catch involved, right? And he kind of wanted her to give him a sexual act in exchange for the ride. Lah. So it's not the first time it's happened to her. And then uh, I think it kind of blew up in terms of the comments. So some people were saying that, oh, you know, she was asking for it. Some people were saying, oh, if, if let's say you were, you were not so cheap, you'd be asking what's the catch. You know, it's the latest piece in a, in a long running series of like sexual related pervy stuff that Singaporean people have been doing. Especially related to grab. Right, because yeah. that's the kind of thing that keeps coming up again and again. I mean, technically, it's not grab. Sometimes this one was a Telegram group chat. Oh yes, yes, yes. So it's yes. like a little like, like, like right sharing, right sharing, yeah, right sharing, yeah, right stuff. sharing, hitch stuff. Yeah. It's like the whole idea of like you know you want to ride ca like cash, uh, grass or ass, right? Yes. I mean that already seems unsafe. Like yeah. right off the bat, I personally would not use something like that. Mm. Right. And yeah. it's on Telegram, right? So it's like not regulated. It's not. It's I not guess. regulated. Yeah. It's, it's self policed. Mm. Is it illegal? What? Asking people no, for... No, having like, something like that on... Actually, is it being yeah. shut down, right? I don't think it's mm -hmm. illegal la. I don't see like... I don't see why a, a hitch thing would be illegal. It's just more like... It should be illegal to ask people to, like this kind of new propositions. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, like, have you guys had any, any experiences with perverts in Singapore before? Specifically the ride sharing. I think every woman... Okay, maybe that's a bit of a like generalisation. But a lot of women in Singapore, I think they will have experiences like that on ride sharing apps, right? That's why people started screenshotting like the details of the driver, yeah. and the details of the licence plate and stuff to send to their friends. Have you all kinda before? Yeah, so I, I booked a grab from Yishun is oh, like, Yishun. I had rehearsal. Of course, uh, of course, where else? <laughs> You're <I> asking <laughs> for it then. It was like some industrial building, okay? Yeah. And then it was, so I ended the rehearsal at about like 2 a.m., okay? Okay, I know red flag already. You, you book a cab in Yishun at 2 a.m., okay? And then my destination was Geylang, okay? So this really big car came. I was like, it was like a party. Like, like, it's a limousine. like, like a limousine yeah. with like lights and stuff. So I was like, whoa, like, oh, I had a long day, right? And oh, I can relax in the car. So the journey was very long, okay? So this guy started like chatting with me. Oh, what are you doing in this building? Oh, uh, are you going home? Blah, blah, blah. And you know, you just chat like using my phone, chatting with him. And then he was like switching the lights, telling me about everything in the car. Like, oh, this is so fun. And then suddenly he was like, oh, do you know, um, I had this god sister. She also lives around Geylang. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I take her out to movies sometimes. She's like, um, I pay for everything, you know? Like when I take her out for meals and movies. I was like, oh, cool. So the place we're going to, it's your house. It's where you live. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, they're like, you know, alarm bells, right? And I was yeah, like freaking uncomfortable. That. I was like, mm, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> it's like, Sometimes. It's like, I don't, I don't, yeah, like, you don't I give him a straight yeah. answer. Yeah. It, it's this something apartment, okay? So it's like kind of, he already knows it's like a residential complex. And I was like, I don't really want to answer him. So I pretended to be really like furiously texting on my phone, like replying someone, like I have something to attend to. So he's like, how old are you? Then I think at that point I was 20 or 19. It's like, yeah, so it's very similar age to that god sister. I think you would like enjoy like like going out, having fun, watching movies. I pay for everything. Like again, he said la. And then when we reached the place, like m my place, and I just got out of the car and I ran. I ran up and I just I I and then it stuck with me. Okay? So that one was not overtly sexual. Yeah, it's the other one that it that, that is overtly sexual is I flagged the cab from Geylang okay. and then when I got on the first question the uncle asked me was Hey, you working here? 
And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, you're a prostitute. And then I was like, what? And that was worse because I was 15 Whoa. in t-shirt and jeans. Oh, no. And the funny thing was, I was going to church. So, oh. so, <laughs> so, I was like, what is with drivers and cab drivers? I'm not even ride sharing. Like, I, I alighted and I fled. Like, I just ran. Like ran, ran, ran away? Yeah, so, so all these like ride-sharing, cab driver, making weird pervy comments thing, right? They have been a part of my growing up. That's how yeah. I, would lie, essentially. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I would believe it's because they feel like they're in some kind of position of power, right? It's like they are the you're ones driving right now, yeah, they're in, yeah. Your, you're in their car, they're in control in the moment, and maybe that gives them more of a license to say those things that they say. No, but you're paying for the hit truck. Right? Yeah. yeah, you're paying, you're paying yeah. the fella something, but right? I guess so it's it, not like a pure favour. I mean, definitely not, but I guess any pervy person, it's a crime of opportunity, what? I guess to mm -hmm. You jump to... on the, the opportunity that you get to be able to kind of... And you are trapping the person. Yeah. No, but is, yeah. it, is yeah. it better or worse for the person to be direct and overt? Or like the first guy who was a little bit like, yeah, I mean, you got sister, no better kind of or worse, thing. Right? Yeah, there's no, no Because it's like, worse. Uh, aside from this girl, right, there have been a few other incidents previously, right, where they were a lot more overt. Like, there was this guy that straight up offered the girl like, hey, I want, I want to pay you 500 bucks to touch your thighs and 3k to touch your breasts. Wow. Yeah. Straight up. He was like, no, Would like, you? no hold bar. <laughs> I mean, 3k <laughs> is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... I think I mean I think that's inappropriate regardless of whether you would do it or not. Like you, that's not the kind of thing that should be offered. So I think it happened quite a few like times. I think there was also this other girl that like she didn't get to the cab. She was just mess messaging the guy, and the guy straight up said things to her like he was like saying, "Yeah, uh, I I get off to your pictures and kind of thing." So it was very very like sexual behavior that I think a lot of these drivers kind of like do, and I don't think it's just a driver issue. I feel like it's a wider like Singapore. It's not a driver issue, it's a men's issue. Ah, it's a men's issue, <laughs> it's a men's yeah, issue. Yeah, 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 right? I mean, I doubt oh. that, that women are doing this as often. I mean, you don't, at least you don't read about it, right? The instance I know is obviously it did not happen to me, but it happened to my girlfriend. So it was after she had finished clubbing and she was on the way back. And then this guy, his bumper came off of the car. And already prior to this, he was already like cursing and shouting. And after the bumper came off, the car had to stop and he had to fix the bumper. But he basically got my girlfriend to duct tape the bumper for him. And because she's nice and she doesn't know how to say no, you know, in these kind of situations, she helped him do it. And then after that, on the way back, you know, he kept asking, you know, you're so pretty, how much did you drink? Where did you club? Like, um, can I have your number? And after the ride finished, um, he reported like an item missing. So when that happens, it allows you to communicate with your passenger again, uh, right? Yeah. So yeah. she obviously said no, nothing was missing, but that was his attempt at reaching out again. And I wonder, because in a lot of some of these articles I've read, a lot of time it's being, is these girls being picked up after clubbing mm -hmm. or after drinking. And it almost feels like a very deliberate attempt at, you know, I, oh, I'm in the situation where there's someone that's intoxicated, I might be able to take advantage of this. That actually happened. There yeah, was yeah. a, there was a yeah, yeah, taxi yeah. driver that picked up, I think, a, a drunk, intox in yeah. intoxicated passenger. And he... He r -word. He r -word her in the, yeah, yeah. In the back of the but cab. But wasn't that case, like, they, he, he also argued in court that, like, she was willing... I mean, I feel like that's yeah. the only defence, right? But yeah. if you look at the circumstances right, of it all, like... In the end, I think it was a case whereby uh, she wasn't intoxicated beyond the point of being able to give consent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was it. But I think the case might still potentially be on appeal, I'm not sure. But here's the thing. I feel like all of these individual incidences actually kind of form, like, a weird tapestry of perversion, if you think about mm -hmm. it. Because it's not just about, like, all these very, very flagrant, like, like moments. It's all about like, like the people sneaking into toilets to go and take picture. Right. Like there have been so many guys captured on CCTV like stealing underwear. Mm -hmm. Or like kind of like ridiculous things. Now, this guy was on a cruise. He went to go and steal uh, someone's bra. Mm. He snuck from his cabin to her cabin just to steal a bra. But is it, is it a case where like, are we just reporting it more and catching it more? Or is it a case where like, no, Singaporeans are getting more perverted? I mean, I, I think perversion has happened for a long time, mm -hmm. right? It's not like a new thing. I mean, maybe the internet has made it kind of, yeah, exacerbated yeah. it a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But it's been going on for a long time. I just think the culture of women reporting it has increased. There's more confidence about speaking up about these things. Yeah. That is why it's being reported more and more people are being caught for it. Which is a good know? thing. Yeah. I think definitely like maybe it's coming up more because we're starting to realize it's a, a worse thing than it, you know, that it is a bad thing. Um, like maybe in the past, it was something that we overlooked because, oh, you know, boys will be boys or yeah. that kind of thing. And now we're like, no, hang on a second. We actually need to do something to change this. This is a real problem and we need to do a better job of 
educating the current generation and the next generation so that mm. maybe this can be less of a problem yeah. in the future. But now in some countries, the solution is to create like a ride-sharing service that's exclusively female drivers, not for females, mm. right? So it's still, you know, boys would be boys. So, yeah, they so you're rather, avoiding the problem, yeah. you're like going around no, to try and solve it. There's no fixing it. of the problem, yeah. not, not about educating boys to be better, but it's about yeah. let's create things so we are safer. Yeah. Right. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of mm. like how in in Japan they have the female only cabin because mm. like there have been so many like incidences of molest like on the on the trains. Uh. Yeah. I feel like we should have that in Singapore, yeah. I feel like we, we should have should. that everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think in Singapore, I don't know, maybe it's like a mix of like our culture. Like we're a little bit more conservative, so that is kind of avoided in schools and whatnot. And it's not really talked about. I think parents don't talk to their kids about it. I mean, it could just be an assumption I'm making, right? But I think it's a fair one. You know, in Asian cultures, there isn't really much talk of the birds and the bees. It's not. There isn't that education there growing up. And I think with TikTok <laughs> and the internet and the easy access to things like porn, I think all of this just becomes way worse. Okay, I got, I got a hot take. What's your hot take? Yeah, I got a hot take. One of the things that people talk about, especially when like, um, okay, yeah, you know hardware zone, right? People talk about this kind of thing a lot, right? And like people say that, if the guy is handsome and he's good looking, he's not pervert. Oh, I saw that. But if the guy is damn sweet, damn ugly, he has confirmed tikope. Right? Because I feel like what differentiates a creepy encounter from a meet cute? I think it's uh, the, the nature, but I don't, I'm not a woman, you answer. Yeah, I'm not a woman as well. What yeah. do you guys think? Your talk. I mean, I personally anything? feel uncomfortable like any time like a male is gonna approach me in public. So I guess I've just ruled out the meet cute. The meet cute doesn't happen for you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Have you ever been approached respectfully? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think she has as well. Yeah, in a way that you feel comfortable giving your number out? Oh, no. No, it's still no, no. way. You were approached in public, no. not keen. I just, I don't like that I, if I'm going about my daily life, like someone feels like, I don't know, that they can just like come up to me and like, um, I guess assume things. <laughs> As you what? That like I would want to hang out with them or go on a date. <laughs> like it's, like the, the example I'm thinking of was a couple months ago. I was at the library and this guy came up to me and he was like, Oh, uh, where are you from? And I was like, right off the bat, you're assuming that like you, you looked at me and like made a judgment mm -hmm. about like, Oh, I'm not from here and that I'm from somewhere else. And I was like, Oh, I'm from Singapore. And then he was like, oh, but like, you know, like the way you dress, it's like, it's very interesting. Like, I like it. And oh, I was like, right. nothing interesting. <laughs> yeah, nothing <laughs> interesting. Change, right? And then I was like, okay. And I was like, you know, kept giving signals, like trying to like go back to my mm -hmm. book and keep reading. And I just feel like sometimes they like, when they keep pushing, then you're like, oh, well, now you're, now you're invading my, my space. Uh, right. Oh, I have another story. Mm -hmm. I was at a food court. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone with someone. I was talking on the phone actually with my boyfriend. This guy came up to me and he was like, hi, sorry, like I think you're really pretty. Could I get your number? I'm on the phone, so I was like, oh, excuse me, sorry. And then I was like, sorry, do you, do you need something? Like I thought he maybe needed like directions or something. And he was like, oh no, I just, I wanted to get your number. And I was like, oh, sorry, I'm on the <laughs> phone. Like I, I don't have, like I can't. And then I like went back uh. to my phone call and he was like, Okay, fine, and then walked off, and I was like, oh. I was on the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's like just reading the vibe of the person and like being sensitive towards that. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a little scary because like sometimes when the guy approaches you, right, and then you like turn them down. Yeah. Then sometimes they can get quite upset. Clearly, yeah. Uh, There's a fear, right, as to what he might potentially do mm. because he's upset. But is it a case whereby if the guy is good looking, it's not creepy, but if the guy is not good looking, he's creepy? But I feel like in the saying of it, it feels very slimy. Like it feels in the... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in saying it. of what? Saying yeah, of, hey, can what? I have your number? Or, hey, if I give you 3K, 3K, touch 3K I can't touch your chest. Which one are you referring to? Both. Both. The, is the number one slimy? Depends on the context. If the context is we are on a bus, okay. and then I see you in That's the bus. That's happened to me on the bus. And then you come, you approach. I mean, it's happened to my friends too, some of which have given numbers, right? If you're on a bus and then he walks in, damn handsome. Damn handsome. Then he's like, can I have your number? Now I won't. But right. when, I think when I was younger, I might. Because mm. when I was younger, I wouldn't say no because I didn't know how to. But I would just block the number. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now it's like I think all blanket rule is like no because yeah. 
You're a stranger. I just wouldn't mm. give How would I not know you're a serial yeah. killer? The fact that people are still doing it means that sometimes it works. No, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the, the, the number is given out. Because people the people keep doing it. Because like sometimes it happens and like, God lah, it got happened before lah. You ask a girl for a number and, and she will give her. This is like before Tinder, right? How, how else are you yeah, going to yeah, go about yeah. Yeah. meeting people? Yeah. You have to kind of meet them in the library, you meet them in cafes and you just woke up the courage to strike up a really? conversation. Yeah. yeah. I've asked uh, for a girl's number before. Oh, how, how do you ask? I how, said, how, uh, yeah. So I said, I said, this was like maybe like four years ago. And I, and I did it because I was, I didn't, wasn't that keen on getting a number. I just wanted to do it. You know, I wanted to like try and see how it would be like to get a girl's number. So I was in the train <laughs> station and I went up to her and I said, Oh, hi, you know, I saw you from... Okay, I didn't say I saw you from the distance. I didn't say that. I can't remember what I said. But it was along the lines of, you know, I think you're really pretty and I would love to take you out sometime. Could I have your Instagram or your number? And then she said, uh, no, sorry, I've got a boyfriend. So if I was handsome, would I have gotten her number? I was thinking more like if, if, I was thinking more like if you were a lot uglier than you are, would she be like, you no pervert, get lost. <laughs> I've heard, yeah. I've heard like my female friends say that asking for an Instagram is a lot less intrusive than asking for a number. Yes. Is that true? I guess that is true. I'd be more yeah. willing to give out my Instagram than my number right, for right. sure. Because there's, there's the, I don't know you, but you know, if you're keen, then Instagram's like the first good step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one thing I'm going to ask actually. I'm going to ask you guys, like, mm -hmm. do you think that like men kind of ogling you in public spaces is kind of like considered a pervert issue? Yes. Whoa, unanimous, <laughs> yeah. So I, uncomfortable. Yeah. Because there's, not, there's nothing you can do about it, also, right? No, I st I've started staring back. It kind of works. Like, Does I it? like if, they, mm. if, if, if like especially if I catch someone like multiple times like on the bus or whatever looking at me, I'll just like look at them and be like, like look them up and down mm. and be like. <laughs> like, exactly do, like yeah, that. I, I do that back to them because that's what they're doing to me. Yeah. And I mean, it's taken like confidence to get to this place yeah. where I feel like I can stand yeah, up to yeah, people yeah. in public because, like, younger girls, like, you just feel uncomfortable and you don't know yeah. what to do because there's nowhere to hide. These people are staring at you. There's nothing yeah. you can say because technically they can look wherever they want to look. Yeah, right? it's not technically mm. illegal as well. Yeah. So then, like, what can what can you really do except like now I just mm. try to make it known to them. Like, I see you looking at me. Yeah. Look, let me. I'm. I can look at you too. Stop mm. looking at me. But it works. Uh, yeah, most of the time they like they're like uncomfortable and they're like oh like because they've been caught. They were oh. caught staring at me, and and they they didn't and they thought they could get away with it. The one that I really hate the most, like, I I feel like I hate it because it's not really a crime. It's like when random men all go at women. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've seen it happen to like um, my girlfriend a lot, right? Where like you walk past a coffee shop and you see like, a bunch of uncles that are drinking there and they will just. There, the shit out of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, there's nothing I can do about it, right? Because technically, what they're doing is not a crime. And these men have gotten to the point, right, whereby they have no more shame. If it's a guy on a bus staring at you and you stare at him, he feels embarrassed, yeah. right? But these are like hardened perverts, uh, yeah. that sit there all day and stare at the women that walk past and they have no shame whatsoever. But do you think that belongs to the older generation? Yeah, it's the same people that, that say it's because of what you're wearing, right? Yeah. 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 And it's an entitlement of like, like... Entitlement that they can yeah. say and do what they yeah. want. I have a story of this time I went to Chinatown with my mom and I wanted to buy a kabaya, like a traditional oh, yeah. outfit, um, to bring to the US to university to wear for like na you know, national day and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the uncle there, when I put the kabaya on and I came out, he was like, wow, your flashlight's damn big. Whoa. He said that in front of my mom. Like my mom was there with me shopping, purchasing and I was probably like 18, 19. And the, the uncle said that to me in front of my mom. What did your mom do? We both just like, were like shocked. uncomfortable, like yeah. shocked. And like, like, how do you respond to that? Is he the store owner? Like, yeah, a, the store owner. Did you yeah. buy it? Oh uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but like... Why? But going off of what you said, it's the entitlement that they can say yeah. things like that and get away with it. And it's like, you're going to just brush off and be like, oh, just some just some old guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's just making a comment, like, you know... It's, and you that view of women as like, you need to look pretty and desirable from... It's from that generation. Yeah. This sounds like there's two distinct classes of perverts, right? The older generation pervert, and the new generation who are like technology enabled mm. perverts, right? That will have like secret cameras. Like there was this, oh, yeah. Yeah. there was this case with this guy, right? Yeah, there was this case yeah. with this guy. This like, I think it's some high flyer, yeah. who was kind of like found. He was he's been filming his friends and classmates and schoolmates since he was seventeen oh, years yes, old. Yes, yes, yes. In he his would, home, right? In his in home, he yeah, install yeah, yeah. secret cameras in the toilets and like all the different rooms. And then when people come over for parties and stuff like that, he will film everyone now. Uh. See how much money that people are willing to spend and yeah. give in order 
to do these things yeah. like the three three k to touch breasts, yeah. money to buy cameras to set up, like go to a great extent to violate people sexually. Yeah, being a pervert is, like, is an expensive hobby. It seems. It's an expensive hobby, addiction, problem, <laughs> issue, <laughs> compulsion. Yeah, I think it is. That's why, I mean, I, I wonder if how much of it is a mental illness and how much it needs to be treated because your, the brain is wired in a very specific way, mm -hmm. right, for you to then commit these actions. Yeah. Right, and I think it needs a rewiring of the brain to get you out of that illness. Is it an illness? I think, I mean, it depends what you categorize as an illness, right? I think it can be considered an illness. If it's a compulsion that is not dealt with, it grows into an illness that you then need to fix. It's an illness of the brain, right? Yeah. A compulsion, an addiction. Addiction is an illness, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I think it, it, it can be categorized as an illness. It's just, it's just almost, I mean, if it is a problem, right? I mean, you're saying it is a problem. Right? I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem. We all can agree well. that it's a problem, right? Yeah. Is that like a solution to that problem? Or is it just gonna go on forever? A solution. solution to the problem. I mean, okay, is that. Guys, let's come up with a solution. That's the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, I do, like, a lot. The government says, you know, over the past few years, we've been really trying to, like, okay. you know, catch catch criminals that are, you know, basically catch perverts, you know, a really hard stance on these kind of things, you know, and making sure that we're more on the ball when it comes to um, outrageous of modesty and all that kind of stuff. But okay, to circle back, right? So to this to this whole Grab incident and Grab drivers feeling like they can, or I mean, or in this case, the Telegram hitch driver, obviously what they're doing is wrong, but you know how a lot of these comments are saying like, oh, um, she shouldn't have booked that Telegram hitch. Is there a level of, oh, maybe she should just have booked a Grab? No, it's more like, it's more like um, people, because she screenshotted the chat, right? Yeah. And then at one point during the conversation, she asked, what's the catch? And people just took it as a, oh, if you were truly like a, a very demure kind of girl, you wouldn't even be asking what's the catch. Because mm. you would know better than that. So they're saying, oh, because well, she you... should have assumed that it was sexual services <laughs> as the catch? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Cannot be what? Yeah. Because what other catch can that be? So is the way for women forward in Singapore, right? It's just expect the worst out of men? Don't know, don't know. That sounds depressing. I mean, but that, that when with all this victim shaming that's happening, right? That seems to be the... Not victim shaming, victim blaming that's happening. That seems to be the answer. Just expect the worst out of men. Do you already not? Like, let's say you're out very late night. <laughs> I think she does, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, when you walk on the street, you just assume the worst case scenario. That's how <coughs> we've been raised yes. as women in this society is like, you have to be careful, like, Take your headphones out, be aware of your surroundings, you know, keep an eye out, keep an ear out, like keep your keys in your hand yeah. or whatever. That's how we've You know, I've gotten to a point where it's late night and I see a man on the pavement, like the pedestrian pavement, I walk on the open road. Because to me, it's like, if you dare touch me or do anything to me, then let's die together on the road. Wow. Because like, I expect the worst. Like you're, you're, you're saying don't do that, but actually subconsciously, a lot of us already Expect the worst from men. Just expect the worst so that you can protect yourself. You're walking back home at night on the street, you in kamikaze mode already. But also, yeah. also because it's gay now, so. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of things that Shane go through, like that, yeah. it's, no, it's gay lang la. la. different but la. I think different. all my female friends also, I think it's the same one. Is that, it's a fear. Fear, yeah, fear. It's a fear. mad fear. But I've also seen like people online like among guy friends that are telling each other like, hey, if it's late night and you see like a lone female walking on the street, don't walk so close behind her. Mm. Like, like walk on another side of the road. Like, like it's not you. Yes, we know it's not all men. But like by doing that, maybe you can make her feel safer. So a lot of guy friends are telling other guy friends to do that to prove like, hey, it's not all men. Actually, that's actually quite true. One of the things that I always tell my friends is like, don't have, like, if you go clubbing, you go drinking, and you like talk to a girl and everything, right? If the girl is drunk in any way or form, yeah. don't do anything. Uh. Just don't. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no point. Yeah, yeah. Like that's there really is like you might as well just protect yourself instead of trying to like get late because like yeah, it's yeah. not it's not worth it. Uh. Yeah. So I think that there, there is that the, this notion of men being allies. I think it's there lah. I think it really is there lah. And like, you know how people said, oh, the, the, when the Me Too movement first kicked off, right? A lot of the Western commentators were like, oh, this is gonna scare men, this is gonna scare men. But it's not that bad to scare men lah, to be honest. Mm. Like, I feel like even right now as I go about my daily life, let's say I, I'm walking up an escalator, right? I would make it a point lah, to just tuck my arm behind me because I don't want to be caught in a weird situation whereby an accidental brush or some kind of incidental like, kind of contact puts me in a bad light. So I always like put my hand behind, I raise my hand in like in, in a club, that kind of thing. Because I feel like it's just a bit safer for me. Mm. And I feel like if, does it, would it make women feel safer? Yeah. If all men did that? 
Right. Yeah, I guess I just hope that we're acknowledging this, like all with the hope that in the future we can live in a world where we can give men the credit they deserve, which is that they're not like, oh, men are the animals, and you know, women are we're like poised and we like have it all together. Like it's not that. Like we're all human beings. Yeah. And I I think it's sad that we have to like you know see men in this different light. Like I hope that we're working towards a society where we're like, hey, men are accountable for their actions, women are accountable for their actions, mm -hmm. and you know we can we can.、Um, Give them the the power to go go about their lives without being scared, and, and, and we don't have to be scared either. The bare minimum. From yeah, them, right? exactly. Yeah. Not expect the bare minimum because we we're not giving them the credit they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we we've addressed the men side of the equation, right? But I feel like that's actually a. I mean, it's、yeah. not necessarily a bad thing. It might be like an expose to bring light to these issues because I certainly didn't realize this was happening at the frequency that it was happening until I started seeing so many articles and people posting about it. These screenshots. I'm、mm -hmm. not saying like she like fabricated it to like gain fame, but like、yeah. maybe just bring awareness to the issue so that it can get the attention that it deserves. It deserves to be resolved. Yeah, but I think that the the flip side to this is that there are like like some women appreciate the transactional nature of like. The relationship between men and women, right? And they know how to kind of work the levers and push the right buttons so that they can exploit it, lah. But that's quite a quite a lengthy topic. Ah, we'll we'll address it in the next in the next episode. I don't think I, I don't think I'll have time. Okay, so we have come to the end of our episode. Any final thoughts? Okay, so um, yeah, final thoughts would be I think we need to listen to each other more. And if someone says they're uncomfortable about something, you have no right to say that they're not. So my final thoughts are that yes, I think Singapore does have. Issues with perverts,、um, but I think we have a global pervert problem, and I think we're making steps in the right direction. Singapore got a lot of chikope. Can we stop? <laughs> <laughs> and my final thought is,、uh, there clearly is a problem, and I would prefer if we have like female drivers only option. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> can can I choose female dentist, female gynecologist, female doctors, pediatrician? Everything. I will feel safer that way. When you BTO, just don't BTO in Geylang. Ah, next time in the future. That's how the gender war starts, yeah, by the yeah, way. Once、yeah. you start doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You、Why? divide it. Never again, Geylang. <laughs> 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 okay. So, what do you think? Does Singapore have a pervert problem? Leave your comment down below. We'd love to hear them, and don't forget to subscribe and come back next time for our next episode. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>